pain. Let's talk about chronic pain because it is day 51 out of 180. And if I want to make anything truly meaningful happen in my life, like the problem that I have to solve for as quickly as possible is just the debilitating chronic back pain that is plaguing my every moment of existence right now. Um, I got a couple her herniated discs and I'm just in this vicious cycle, financial and mental and emotional cycle that I think a lot of other probably, you know, paraplegic or disabled people or anyone dealing with chronic pain or sickness or unwellness in any way can relate to and that is the pain and the lack of sleep from it and just the constant nagging you know intensity of it is preventing me from doing a lot of the things that I need to do so that I can earn money financially and financially I need money to solve for the pain equation because what definitely doesn't work oh, there's some blood on my my nail there um what doesn't work uh any sort of pain relief opiate painkiller you know muscle relaxers any sort of thing to mask the pain is just a straight downhill slope there's nothing out there that you know maybe some high dose cbd or something but that's gets insanely expensive to like really take enough to make a dent in the pain and I have to imagine just like everything else there's a yin and a yang and there's some sort of deleterious effect to doing too high dose though I don't know of one for sure I would actually um, you know consider that it just does the amount that I need to really um, help with the pain is crazy expensive um, and so yeah, with anything else, I mean, opiates, they help tremendously with the pain, but if you want to zap the f frequency yourself into a lower frequency and just suck the life out of everything you're doing, you know, take opiate painkillers, take benzodiazepines, you know, take sleep aids, any of that stuff that just masks the real um, problem, just masks one of the symptoms, because pain is a symptom of something that needs to be fixed. And so masking it, always going to cause issues, always gonna cause more pain. Later on, you're just borrowing comfort from the future with any of those medications. I'm terrified of surgery. I had a massive uh, muscle flap surgery where I had an amazing plastic surgeon reconstructed all the muscles in my back and removed some and you know put them in all different places so i'm terrified of having anyone uh just anyone you know do surgery on my back so trying to avoid that at all costs and everyone who i have confidence that they could really help me recommends whatever their treatment is you know multiple times a week at some exorbitant price with you know which at that point, if I could afford to do that, I would just pay to do more physical therapy, which I could afford to do if I could work more, if I could focus at work, and if I could, um, you know, really in enjoy being at work. Because I, what I realize is I, I harp on my job and the insurance industry and everything all the time on, you know, in this last 50 one days of recording videos but i wouldn't actually mind it that much or be hardly bothered by it at all if i could if it wasn't coupled with actual physical torture going in and sitting at a desk for six seven eight twelve hours even with the little respite that i get from the going down to the gym i mean by you know i start the day off at like a 4.5 or a 5 on the pain scale and by the end of the afternoon i'm at like a seven to like a nine sometimes to where it's like truly an intolerable all-consuming eat away at your soul 
level of pain and you couple that with doing something that you maybe don't enjoy as much as you enjoy doing other things, uh, being inside and all of that, and it just becomes soul crush. It becomes very, very difficult. Certainly the most difficult thing that I have ever done. And I, prior to my injury, I was always a person who sought out difficulty and suffering and pain in the things that I like to do as far as endurance, uh, endurance, feats of endurance, and just the adventures that I like to go on. I liked getting into the, you know, the pain cave, the suffering cave of, you know, cycling 50 to 100 miles every single day through the desert of Africa. And just, yeah, you know, I, I, enjoy, I did some really hard shit before I was ever injured. And it's, it doesn't even compare. I mean, it's not even in the same bracket of difficulty. I mean, it's orders of magnitude more difficult to go sit at work and just endure endless um, and increasing physical suffering while I'm there. And I have to solve for it. I have to figure out how I'm going to, I asked for some, and one of my biggest problems is I am just terrified of of doctors i have like a real phobia of going to you know just any old doctor i feel like if i go to an orthopedic surgeon what are they going to recommend surgery if i go to a chiropractor what are they going to recommend endless chiropractic five times a week and it's just like i just want someone who's got all the tools in their toolkit to tell me what i actually need to do not just tell me you know that would tiny little narrow lane that they operate. If I go to a pain doctor, they're going to give me painkillers. They're going to give me nerve ablation. They're going to give me, you know, dexamethasone shots in the nerves. They're just, everyone's got such a limited, not everyone, but so many doctors have such a limited scope of practice that they go down. And I, I just can't believe that it's not uh, a grouping of things that I need to treat this problem. What I really need for sure is to wake up five days a week and do like two to five hours of physical therapy with professional physical therapists. Like that's what I really need. But I mean, that's thousands of dollars per week, um, which I would be more than willing to invest myself. And I plan on doing that eventually as I become, uh, you know, more and more financially equipped to to do so, but that doesn't solve the problem today. And so I really am going to systematize and think about exactly what needs to happen. I'm going to reach out for help, which is the hardest thing for me to do is to, you know, go and reach out to other people and say, who do you know in your life that's most likely to be able to help me solve this problem. That's one of the, uh, you know, biggest hurdles that I've kind of had to face in the last five years is I am incredibly um, unlikely to ask for help when I, I need it the most. And so I'm going to make a conscious effort to to do that. I've already done so. I reached out to uh, the director of CORE, uh, the Center of Recovery and Exercise here. Her name's Mallory. She's an angel. She's awesome. She's so smart. One of the most knowledgeable people in neurological healing and spinal cord injury that I've ever had the good fortune of meeting um, and I reached out to her and she recommended a chiropractic doctor who does take a more a broad approach to where if it's surgery that you need, she'll recommend an orthopedic surgeon to go get a surgery from. If it's chiropractic you need, if it's what you need, whatever it is you need, she's apt to actually, um, you know, make a plan for you. So going to go see her. I'm going to, today's Sunday. So I'll call first thing in the morning and see what the um, earliest she can get me in is. And then I'm just going to be, I've really neglected the part of this challenge that I set forth for myself 
to do with pull-ups, but I've got a intuition that if I could do, you know, 30 consecutive pull-ups, if I had that back strength and that muscle, I do think that my spine would be way more stable and I would be able to, um, yeah, I would be living with significantly less pain than I am now. But again, the pain is preventing me from doing the work. It's so difficult when just getting out of bed, when just getting dressed is mustering every single fiber of my willpower um, to you know, just sit up in bed that first time in the morning. I mean, I sometimes it takes me hours from the time I wake up and feel good and rested and ready to go. It takes me an hour plus to muster up the willpower to fight through the pain that I wake up in. And so with that, it, you know, it's hard to, you know, willpower is a finite well that you draw from each day. And as you use more and more of it, the well does get deeper and you're able to, you know, start with a larger reserve of willpower the next day as you, you know, dig down to the bottom and it's completely empty and you, you, there, there's always more, you can find it. It's just a lot of digging. It's a lot of work and it's hard. Once that well runs dry during the day, you know, it's serious excavation and, hard work and fortitude that dig it a little deeper for the next day. And I'm just going to have to, my mantra in life is when you can't do, when you ran out of energy, you can't do anything else. You've exhausted all your efforts and you're completely tapped out. Then it's time you can do, it's time to fucking step up and you have to just think it's not, I'm not going to just do a little bit more. I'm going to do orders of magnitude more. I'm, I, I have a million times more capability than this. I, I'm i not tapped out. I have a million times more ability than I think I do to achieve whatever it is I need to achieve. I just got to find the system to tap into that, to tap into that reserve. I got to bust out you know, some new metaphorical technology, drill fucking deeper and strike a giant well of willpower. That's the only choice um, because I operated for the first four years of uh, having a spinal cord injury that I thought that I was doing as much as I could possibly do. I thought I was tapped out on willpower. I thought I was and I, I was doing a little tiny bit more every single day. But then um, Kelsey just got fed up with financially, like me constantly failing at projects I was working on and uh, or giving up or just running out of steam, to be honest, just not being able to do what I needed to do. She got um, fed up and was like, if you don't figure it the fuck out and be the man that I know you can be, I don't want to be with you anymore. And that realize that facing the loss of who I consider to be my soulmate and the love of my life um, and, you know, facing the fact that I, I'm not going to get to have a family with this person and not going to have the future that breathes life into me, I, I decided like that's when I adopted the mentality that when you're completely tapped out, it's time to do a million times more. Dig so fucking deep and just endure more pain, more suffering, try harder, work harder, do more. And that's how I ended up um, being able to get a job and go and sit for the first few months that I did the insurance thing. I mean, I was there basically six to seven days a week for 12 to 14 hours a day, enduring such an imaginable amount of suffering. You can't, I can't, I can't put into words. I've never endured anything and I'm paying the price now. That's why my discs are herniated. That's why I'm in so much pain now is because it just deteriorated my body in an unfathomable way. All I did was sit in one position for 12 hours a day and work to make myself, um, you know, fight to 
get myself to a point where I could financially support myself despite the fact that I have no formal education. I mean, I dropped out of um, high school when I was like 15 or 16, probably just turned 16. I dropped out of uh, university when by the time I was 18, maybe 19, um, and have just done a bunch of random odd jobs all based on like everything like my entire value in the workplace was based on my like animalistic physicality where i was willing to work physically harder than anyone else always on every job site on every position i was ever in i was able to work more hours i was able to work harder the whole time i was focused the whole time that was my value i didn't have you know i hadn't built up a, a repertoire of you know, mental skills to uh, be valuable inside of a business. Everything was physical. And so the only way I was able to, you know, do that, I kind of got sidetracked there. The bottom line is, is uh, yeah, got to solve for this problem. That's what's on my mind. If you're in chronic pain every day, just know like no one else, it, you are enduring so much give yourself some credit give yourself some leeway and give yourself the love that you deserve and start realizing that the problem can be solved for the way to not to do it is no one else is gonna you know solve the problem for you there's no shot there's no I mean maybe there is for certain things but in general for real chronic debilitating constant pain the answer is always going to be work that's the truth of it it's going to be stretching physical therapy exercise strengthening consciously putting your body in the position it needs to be a thousand times a day which is the hardest thing for me is um you know sitting in the chair having good posture and really tucking in my abs and um you know keeping my back strong is incredibly difficult and uncomfortable and it's the hardest thing ever and it's more it's much easier to just kind of sit with bad posture and everything because it's the same willpower thing just enduring and being up and moving and doing things and working and making videos and calling people for insurance and cleaning my house and doing laundry taking my dogs for a walk feeding the little bastards and feeding myself and everything that already just zaps so much out of me to do all that while enduring just chronic debilitating pain is fucking exhausting and uh yeah to add working out on top of that <clears throat> excuse me that was disgusting uh i'm not tearing up i am just having a minor like throat nose fucking situation from every time I fly I get like a minor cold afterwards um doing a bunch of drugs and staying up for days at a time probably didn't uh bolster the immune system too much but uh I digress the uh the point I was trying to make is that doing a little extra work every single second of every day of reminding myself to sit up and pull my shoulders back and keep my back tight um, is just, it's exhausting. It's ex exhausting to even layer that tiny little bit on there, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. This is the problem we are solving for, for the next, you know, foreseeable few weeks and future. I'm gonna come up with an equation for getting rid of this chronic debilitating pain that I'm in. And I think maybe not the exact um exact protocol that works for me but will work for you know i don't know that it will work for i, I know that it won't work for uh, most other people but i think the systemization of creating a protocol and the thinking through it and the intuition and everything that comes along with that i think that is going to be applicable to anyone in chronic pain and so if that's you please do stay tuned i'm going to start consulting with everyone i can i'm going to reach out to um you know the smartest people 
in the world and get them on podcasts and on video episodes on how to solve for this problem. So if you are like me, and because this is, this is the ultimate goal of this whole thing. This is why I'm filming myself. This is why I make these um, videos. This is why I have energy to, to do all of this is because I didn't know before I was injured that this lo level of suffering like in human existence was possible. I really had no idea it was impossible for human beings to suffer as much as I suffered, especially when I was first um, discharged from the hospital. I had uh, infection in my spine that was causing a tremendous amount of pain. My whole body was crushed and shattered. I, you know, had broken every rib on the right side of my body, cracked my back or uh, fractured my back in like 18 or 20 places. Um, I've been told different things from different doctors, but at least 18 fractures, three major displacements. I mean, I was really, uh, you know, destroyed afterwards. The infection on top of that, you know, serious infection in the hardware of my back, a, a staph infection, and then on top of that, the antibiotics that I was taking were giving me rhabdomyolysis. I was also taking a fuckload of opiates, which I didn't realize at the time. I thought they were helping. They were actually causing a tremendous amount of more pain than they were ever, ever even kind of getting rid of. Those are net negative. They don't do shit. It's only bad. I promise they lower your frequency. They stop your healing. They cause a cycle of pain that's way worse than just the static um, chronic pain that you would be in without them. So I had all that happening and I was you know, it was the middle of COVID. I'm living, me and Kelsey and just my golden retriever, Cleo, at the time, are living in an 800 square foot apartment alone in Denver during COVID lockdown. And I had no idea that that level of pain and suffering was possible without death. I didn't know you could be inside, encapsulated in such a constant, endless hell. I thought your body would get used to it. I thought you would you know, you were in this chronic amount of pain for X amount of time and it would just kind of become, you know, your new normal. I didn't know that the suffering aspect of it was possible, sustained at such an intensity for such a long time. And I used to like break down crying, not just because of my own suffering, just because of my ingratitude and arrogance and fucking stupidity from before when I lived with no real pain whatsoever and lived with my health, I was just like, I can't believe I didn't know or appreciate um, how amazing it is when you have your health. I just, and I didn't know that there was people out there living with this just endless suffering and just hell on earth. I didn't know that was happening. And I used to just like get this huge flood of emotion that it was, even possible for this to exist and that's my real motivation for being here i want to alleviate that for as many people as possible selfishly i want to alleviate it for myself because i'm tired of being drugged down by uh by pain and suffering i just want to live feeling good and i want so badly to share that with other people more than anything in the world i just want to alleviate um that intense suffering for as many people as possible and give them the tools that I have painstakingly uh, worked to discover and to hone over the course of the last uh, last five years and really for uh, you know the last 20 years because before I was you know in physical pain from this injury I was always in mental and emotional and spiritual anguish for as long as I can remember for a myriad of reasons that I will go into uh, in more depth in a different video because those are you know a completely separate uh, bit of problems you have to solve for but they're directly correlated if you're in you know emotional and psychological and spiritual anguish that is going to transform into physical pain and so you have to really the, I mean, the equation 
involves healing at every level because you can't heal it's such a fallacy that we i i've certainly got myself into many times where i think i'll just heal myself physically and get to a certain level to where i can tolerate living and then i'll deal with the emotional stuff then i'll confront the spiritual aspects of my life but it doesn't uh, it doesn't work you can't heal physically unless you're simultaneously healing emotionally and spiritually it's all we're all a system it works together it it, it doesn't work unless you just tackle all of it head on all at once but that's my uh, thoughts for day 51. I am working from home today. I was about to go in to work, but I just, I couldn't, I cannot tolerate sitting. I'm standing in my standing wheelchair right now um, because I, I just, I, it was absolutely untenable for me to go in and sit for six or seven hours this afternoon. It would have just been... Um, a really negative choice in every way. It would have, I would have been debilitated for the whole week. So I have to take the day here at home to uh, just rehabilitate myself a little bit more so that I can probably go and tolerate Monday tomorrow. And then it's if this current uh, level of pain persists, then it's going to be, you know, probably take Tuesday off, go on Wednesday, take Thursday off, um, Friday I have physical therapy so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a pain in the ass for work because I really do work better when I'm in the office but just going to have to um, do what I have to do there's no way around it and luckily I'm super fortunate to have um, you know superiors I, I supposedly work for myself but I work for people and my superiors who I work for are super understanding and uh, have been accommodating to my situation, which I couldn't be more grateful for. But I am going to, on that note, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to power up the screens here and uh, yeah, start trying to, to sell some health insurance so I can stack up some cash so I can spend it all on a on on healing my body so i can work more the cycle continues but happy to be here uh super grateful if you made it uh this far into the video if you're suffering um from chronic pain and it's just all consuming and debilitating and eating your life it it's cyclical and it is directly correlated to how hard you're willing to work just work harder you just if it sounds impossible, just realize that you can do a million times more than what you're doing right now. It seems like you can't, but you absolutely can. There is an infinite well of willpower and energy that you can tap into. You just got to drill deeper and deeper and excavate more. You can get there. Uh, with that, I'm going to love you and leave you once again. This is probably going to be the conclusion of day 51 because I'm going to grind it out and I've got a bunch of uh, work to do, but I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you on uh, day 52. Au revoir.